So, I had a discussion at work today with a coworker that really kind of inspired today's video. And what happened was, is that this person is religious, and every single time that we work together, uh, the first question that she always asks me and anybody that comes into the office is, how's, how's your day going? And the thing is, is that for me, um, today my day was okay. When I say okay, I don't mean that it was bad as in the sense of uh, I hated what, what my day was like. I, you know, it, it wasn't like that at all. It was more the fact that in my personal belief system, there is a scale, a scale from one to 10. This goes for me with media, uh, movies, video games, whatever it may be. One is the absolute worst that you could possibly be. 10 is the absolute best and five is somewhere in the middle. So doing simple math and averages, five would be the average. However, a lot of people don't look at life that way. A lot of people tend to look at life and movies and media, any video games, books, movies, whatever it may be, TV shows, in the sense that anything and everything must be a seven or above. And I'm gonna use Noah as the example here. Noah, first of all, uses a one to five scale typically. And his his opinions aren't wrong or bad, they're just different than mine on, on films and TV. When he gives something a, let's just use a seven for this example. He's saying that it was decent, he didn't hate it, but he didn't love it. He gives out a lot of eights and nines. Well, on the other hand, I'm more likely to give out a five or a six. So when I give something online, a five or a six, it typically starts a bit of a conversation where I have people that come to me and be like, how the fuck are you going to give this project uh, such a low score? Uh, whether if it's a music project or a video game, right? And, and the thing is, is I'll use the Halo show, as I had somebody reach out to me and say, how can you say that you enjoyed the show, but still give it a seven? And I stopped and tried to explain to them, no, a seven is a great score. A seven is above average. If the show was average at best, then it would be a five. That's how the scale works. Now, when this person asked me, how I was doing and my response was okay, they kind of frowned a little bit and asked me just okay, right? Because, because they expect people to give them a good, decent, or great, you know, sort of response. And that's pretty normal for this environment, right? Uh, it, it is a very bright and bubbly environment, and that's not me saying anything negative about it. But what that is me saying, is that she will view these numbers differently than I will, based off of a few different reasons. Number one, that's just the type of person that she is. Number two, her religious faith gives her this sort of idea that God has given me breath today, meaning that life can't be bad. And that's not a bad thing. I think that if you are somebody that is religious, Having that aspect to your life is fantastic, right? It's a, it's a fantastic, beautiful thing. However, it started a conversation between us about the idea of being okay and being below okay. And in her mind, okay is a negative thing. These days should be great. Your days should be happy, which I agree with, of course. But you're not always going to have a great day. Heck, a lot of times you're not even going to have a decent day. Some days you're just not going to feel like yourself. And that's perfectly okay. And that's where the title of this video comes from. It's okay to not be okay. I want to talk about that a little bit. Is that, uh, you know, no matter what you're feeling, it's okay to feel that way. Nothing is going to stop you from growing and being an amazing person. If you have a bad day where you don't feel like yourself, you're not feeling okay, physically, mentally, whatever it may be, that's so normal and completely acceptable, right? 
And I don't want you to think that it's weird. And I don't want you to make other people make you feel as if it's weird. Because it's not. Right? We're going to have days that don't make us super excited about the day. Like today. My day was okay, not because something bad happened. But because I didn't do anything exciting. I woke up, went to class, went into work. Then I worked on videos. Sure, that was a decent day. But it wasn't some magical day where a great new game came out. That would be a good... Or, you know, I, I didn't have to worry about responsibilities and I was able to relax. That's a good day in my book. But a basic day to me isn't always going to be that great 8 out of 10 day that my coworker may think it is. And once again, it's okay to feel that way. Don't feel that you always have to be this bubbly person that always gives their day an 8 or a 9. It's okay to feel that way. But what is important is to understand that it's important to ask for help and to look for support when we're constantly having these days that aren't going our way and are making us feel a certain way that is overall bringing our mood down, is impacting our life. That's where this idea comes into play, where the idea of it not being okay actually matters. And that may sound funny to some of you because if you've been following along with me, the thing is, is that I've talked about extensively about the importance of positivity, growth, and all these great things. And some people have kind of reached out to me and asked me about that, about sort of this idea of what if I'm not feeling happy? And I've given them the same answer every time. It's okay to feel that way. I mean, it's funny as somebody that studied psychology and, and philosophy over the past two years, is, is that the thing is, is that when we have these emotions, we seek answers. We seek a reason to keep going. And, and that's sort of where that religious aspect plays in. And an example I'm going to use is actually Plato and Aristotle, right? These are sort of the foundational ideas in philosophy and psychology. These are sort of some of the original thinkers when it comes to how the world works and how the human condition works. Plato wrote a, a, uh, the cave allegory. This is sort of an idea of trying to figure out if God exists. Can Plato prove that God exists to himself? That was sort of the idea of this piece. The thing is, is that in his mind, he did prove that God exists. Which, for context, at the time to question if God exists, that wasn't nowadays where you were just judged by Christians. It was you were judged by the fucking nation you lived in. And you were executed. Plato's original research was, was, was hated and scrutinized for decades. Not because it was wrong or that he was dumb, but it was because the people around him couldn't accept that, you know, he was he was a free thinker and then he was questioning the world around him why he had these these self the, these feelings of self-doubt and who he, and if he really existed, right? And what's really funny about that is that even in the end, with Pluto's, you know, environment and his sort of uh ideas and what he was feeling, he still came to the conclusion that God exists. He didn't come back with some idea that, hey, atheism atheism is a cool idea. He came back with the idea that God has to exist. If I exist, God has to exist, right? And even questioning it, he was ridiculed. And I want you to remember something. Those people that are going to ridicule you for thinking different, asking questions, aren't the kind of people that you should be surrounding yourself with, right? What's important is, is to understand that you should be questioning it. Question the universe. That's what, that's what we're designed to do. But, once again, if you're feeling these feelings, I want you to be able to reach out and ask for help. I wear a bracelet every single day on my left wrist that says, it's okay to not be okay. And I carry an extra around with me all the time whenever I see somebody that's struggling in my daily life. And I do this for a specific reason, to spark a conversation about this, this idea that we have in society that you can't have negative thoughts ever. And if you do, something's wrong with you and that it's weird and wrong, 
right? And that there's that you've done something wrong. That's not the case. And that's what's the super important. I want you to take that away. Just because you're feeling down doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. And if anything, it means kind of the opposite. It's normal to feel that way. What's important is, is to start a conversation and figure out why am I feeling this way? And what is going on in my life that is causing me to think this way? Is it something that's going on chemically? Is it something that's been bugging me like an emotional breakup or something of that nature? Or is that just my mood today? And those are all important factors that we all need to look at moving forward in our journey together.